today's podcast, I'm going to talk about two important factors, tube voltage and pitch. Looking at this particular slide, showing here the various scan parameters that impact radiation dose and image quality in CT. The two primary factors are tube voltage and pitch, which have an impact on both the radiation dose and image quality in CT. The first factor is tube voltage, represented by kilo volt kV. Tube voltage is the potential difference between the anode and cathode of X-ray tube. Tube voltage defines the quality of X-rays. The most common tube voltage is 120 kV in CT. The other tube voltage stations are 140 or 135, 100 or 110, 80 and these days we also see 70 kV. Typically 100 kV or 80 kV is used on thin patients. So when you talk about uh, tube voltage, here is the diagram of a X-ray tube. The tube voltage can be thought as the potential difference between the anode and cathode. As explained in the earlier broadcast, the X-ray production, the cathode um, is, is inputted by the tube current. The electrons produced at the cathode end is attracted towards the anode and the speed at which the electrons are attracted to anode results in the energy of the X-rays coming out. So in terms, the potential difference kind of defines the quality of the X-rays produced. The most common CT applications uses 120 kV because the energy of the X-rays produced by 120 kV potential difference is suitable enough to penetrate even the thick portion of the body. However, for thin patients and infants, 180 kV are being routinely used. The lower tube voltage, in fact, decreases the radiation dose to the patient, at the same time improves the image contrast. However, for the obese and also thicker anatomy, often sometimes we have to go to the higher tube voltage such as 140 kV, which is an advantage to penetrate the thick portion of the body or the obese subjects. The diagnostic energy ranges when we talk about is typically in the kilo electron volt range. The diagnostic tube voltages in the diagnostic X-ray tubes go anywhere from 50 kV to 140 kV. Anything higher than that, the X-ray energy is too high which diminishes the image contrast. That's why we confine the tube voltage to less than 140 or 150 kV. The tube voltage in a way controls the image contrast and also amount of penetration. That's one of the reasons why higher tube voltage are used for thicker and obese patients and lower tube voltage can be used on thin patient and average size patient. In the interaction between the tube voltage and the radiation dose as expressed as CTDI which was explained in the earlier broadcast CTDI in fact increases with the tube voltage. One of the way to decrease radiation dose is by decreasing the tube voltage because decreasing KV will decrease radiation dose while other factors are kept constant. Here is an example of the effect of tube voltage expressed as kilo volt KV on the radiation dose and image quality. Shown here are two simulated images. Two simulated images of the abdomen obtained at two different kilo voltage or tube voltage. On the left hand side is the tube voltage obtained at 120 kV and on the right hand side is the image simulated obtained at 135 kV. The radiation dose as indicated here by the CTDI wall is 29 milligray on for the 120 kV and 37 milligray for the 135 kV. The EST or the standard deviation which is an indicator of the image noise is listed as 10 for 120 kV and 8 for 135 kV. What does that mean? What it basically means is like a small change in tube voltage can lead to a larger change in the radiation dose to the subject. The, for example, a 12% change in kV 
leads to approximately 27% increase in dose or change in dose and similarly about 25% change in noise which goes in opposite direction. Shown here is basically explaining the fact that decreasing tube voltage significantly reduces radiation dose because the radiation dose varies typically as kV square. Earlier podcast we discussed about the tube current impact on the patient dose wherein the tube current where it impacted linearly that is the patient dose increased linearly with the tube current whereas here the patient dose changes as kV square. Therefore a small change in kV have a larger impact on the patient dose. Shown here an example of the um, an effective dose estimation obtained at different tube voltage. By going from 120 kV to 100 kV, there is a large decrease in the patient dose. So the take home message is decreasing kV has an impact on reducing radiation dose. The impact of tube voltage uh, and its change on the CTDI is explained in this particular table. This is based on the measurement using the phantoms. On the third, second column is the CTDI wall using head CT phantom, the smaller phantom. And on the fourth column is the CTDI wall for the body phantom. What I try to demonstrate here is the most common tube voltage used in CT is 120. So the tube voltage if it's changed from 120 to 100, keeping all other factors same which means the MAS and the way the detector setup is all same. In that case, by simply changing the tube voltage from 120 to 100, there is actually a decrease of 36% dose for a head CT phantom. For a body CT phantom, there is a change of nearly 30%. So the bottom line here is like going do change in the tube voltage, going lower in the tube voltage, has a remarkable impact on the patient dose. So from 120 to one, uh, just 80 tube voltage, for a body, body protocol, the radiation dose can go down almost 67%. Similarly, if we go on a higher tube voltage, from 120 to 140, for a head phantom, the change was increase of 44% increase, and the body phantom, it was about 67%. What it basically tells is like, there is a paradigm shift now in the CT protocol. Historically, we were only doing all the protocols at 120 kV. Now, with this paradigm shift, we are now doing um, for a pediatric patient and for a small adults, one can decrease the tube voltage and thereby gain the advantage of decreasing the radiation dose to the patient. In fact, that is one of the dose optimization strategies employed for optimizing the radiation dose in CT. The tube voltage modulation can be understood as follows. Unlike tube current modulation, tube voltage modulation is not done automatically by the scanner. The user can select tube voltage based on the patient demographic sizes and so forth. For example, because lower tube voltage improves image contrast and reduces the dose. However, if you decrease the tube voltage too much, one has to have increased tube current to maintain image noise. One of the advantage of using low tube voltage is the following. Especially for studies utilizing iodine contrast, the image contrast increases with use of low tube voltage. because the kH of iodine is about 32 kilo electron volt KEV and lower tube voltage enhances this iodine contrast For ex because here are given different tube voltage and respective average photon energy of the X-ray beam. Therefore going from 120 to 100 or 80 it's more the, the photon beam energy is more closer to the kH of the iodine thereby it enhances the iodine contrast in the image. Here is an example or a graphical description of what the advantage of going into lower tube voltage. 
Explained on the left hand side is the iodine contrast to noise ratio. That is one of the figure of merit we measure the contrast in an image. When a protocol involves iodine, the contrast to noise ratio is measured. Shown here is compared to a 120 tube voltage, which is what the historically most CT protocols were done at. So from 120 tube voltage, if we decrease the tube voltage to 100, the iodine contrast to noise ratio will increase from 15 to 20 for a small size patient and slightly increase from approximately um, 8 or 9 to 10 in a medium size patient and for a large patient it remains the same. The iodine to contrast noise ratio increases even further if you go down in tube voltage to say 80. At the same time, shown on the right hand side is the relative radiation dose to match the iodine contrast to noise ratio. So for normalizing at 120 kV, if we decrease the tube voltage to 100, the radiation dose will decrease from almost 40%. If you go down to 80 kV, the radiation dose will decrease to almost 50, 50 to 60% for a small size patient and and about 40% for a medium sized patient and so forth. So the take home message is going low on the tube voltage on small and medium patient it's a double advantage because it not only increases the iodine to contrast noise ratio but it also decreases the radiation dose to the patient and that's one of the reason why it's highly advocated to use lower tube voltage for thin and average size patient. Here's a study, a clinical study done um, showing the influence of tube voltage on the CT and geography dose. This study involved patients having done at 100 kV and 120 kV. Clearly demonstrates the radiation dose decreases with lower tube voltage even though the image quality score remained the same. Therefore, for a thin and small patients and also average size patient, going down in the KV from, from the use standard use of 120 have an advantage of decreasing the radiation dose to the patient. This is especially important when performing CT perfusion dose. Shown on this busy slide, the dose report for a CT perfusion study, I want to draw your attention to the type of tube voltage needed for CT perfusion study shown here is as a dynamic multi-scan study it is done at 80 kV and that the reason is like if we do it a higher tube voltage that can result in a very high dose and even cause injury to the patient especially for dynamic study it is important to make sure that the protocol is done at the lowest tube voltage available like 80 kV the second factor which I want to talk today is pitch this is applicable to helical CT scan only. The pitch is defined as a ratio of the table travel per gantry rotation to, to total X-ray beam width. Initially when the multi detector CT were introduced, there are two types of pitch, beam pitch and detector pitch. Beam pitch was defined as the table travel per gantry rotation to the total X-ray beam width, whereas the detector pitch is defined as the table travel per gantry rotation to the individual channel width. So the beam width is basically detector pitch divided by the number of dash channel. Shown in this slide on the left hand side is the definition of pitch applicable to single row detector system which is hardly available these days and on the right hand side is the definition of pitch as applicable to the multi detector pitch. So as of now, across the board, international, according to international standards, the pitch is defined as follows. It is defined as the, tra the ratio of the table travel per rotation, that is called the table feed, divided by the beam width. So the beam width W shown here is basically a product of individual channel width multiplied by the number of channel n sub t. Another interesting relationship with respect to pitch is radiation dose to the patient 
is inversely proportional to pitch. What it basically implies is, if the pitch is greater than 1, which means it is implies extended imaging. Imagine a slinky being pulled out, there are some gaps in between, that's a similar scenario for pitch greater than 1. Means some of the anatomy is missed, is not exposed to radiation. The mathematical reconstruction is done for the between the gaps, for the data between the gaps. For the pitch less than 1 means that implies overlapping and that can result in a higher patient dose with higher spatial resolution. This is pretty much typically done in a cardiac CT where there is a lot of overlapping. For most body protocol, the pitch is typically greater than 1. And that's wrapped into this radiation dose descriptors such as CTDI wall, which is CTDI wall is defined as 1 over the pitch time CTDI W. So to show here, the effect of pitch on radiation dose and image quality are three simulated image. In the center image is, a is obtained with a pitch of close to 1, 0 0.87. Let's say the radiation dose, the CTDI is 37 milligram. On the, on the left hand top corner is the image obtained with a pitch of 0 0.64, which means there is a lot of overlap, resulting in a CTDI of 47.8 milligram which almost indicates about 30% higher dose. On the bottom right is the simulated image obtained with a pitch of 1.5 that results in a TTI value of 21 milligray, which is approximately 45% lower. So the take home message is higher the pitch value, lower the dose and lower the pitch value, higher the dose because of the issue of overlapping of the tissue. The pitch affects total scan time. It also affects the radiation dose to the patient and it can impact the noise of the resolution. Shown here are the low contrast resolution phantom used for evaluating contrast resolution in CT. They were scanned a different technique. On the middle image is obtained with a pitch of 0.562. Compare that to the image obtained with a pitch of 1.375. Even though the radiation dose is lower, there is a loss in the contrast resolution compared to the central one. That's where the trade-off occurs between the different pitch value. Along with the pitch concept, there is a concept called effective MAS, which is, which is used in certain CT scanners. That's says Siemens and Philips. They use a concept called effective MAS because where they define effective MAS as a ratio of the MAS divided by pitch. Basically, this concept was based on maintaining the image quality independent of the pitch setting. So the scanner will automatically change the MAS based on the pitch value to keep the MA effective MAS constant. So in conclusion, the tube voltage affects both the image contrast and patient dose. Pitch affects the patient dose and also the total scan time. Understanding trade-off between tube voltage and pitch with regard to image contrast and patient dose are key for optical imaging. Let me stop here. We can continue on the third factor slice thickness in the next broadcast.